What are some true scary experiences that you redditors have been through? Creepy strangers. Unexplainable incidents. Narrow misses. ETC. I once found myself in a cave, along with 8 or 9 other people. It was the middle of the Pennsylvania wilderness, and the only entrance was a small hole in the ground. To enter, you had to sit on your butt, grab a tree root, and drop about 7 feet down a steep wall to the floor. We all dropped in, and spent at least half an hour exploring this cave. My friend Dan taps me on the shoulder and whispers, Dude, look at the ceiling. The ceiling was just high enough above our heads to hide the thousands of spiders crawling around on it. We tried to keep quiet about it, because we didn't want anyone to flip out, but there was no stopping it. Just seconds later the whole group noticed them. Everyone got silent, and you could actually hear the spiders crawling on the surface of the stone. It was an extra nerve wracking situation, because the only way to exit the cave was to basically jump up and pull yourself out of a hole surrounded by spiders. Two of the girls with us were terrified, and refused to climb out. They just couldn't muster the courage to put their faces next to a giant spider nest. They came around though, and everyone got out safe. I had the honor of being the last one to exit, alone in a dark cave filled with spiders, and nobody around to give me a boost. Fortunately, Dan was brave enough to reach down in and give me a hand. When we first discovered that cave, we were all alike. I can't believe we've never heard of this place, now I know why. That cave sucks. A few months later, I found out the cave is off limits in the fall, because of the rattlesnakes. Frick that cave. When I was about 12, I had a lot of issues with night terrors, and rarely slept a whole night through. One night, I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I sat down half asleep and thinking of nothing but emptying my bladder and going back to bed when I see movement out of the corner of my eye. There was a man standing by the other door to the bathroom staring at me, not moving. He was wearing a tattered grey jumpsuit and had a crutch, little to no hair. I don't remember how I got down into the basement where my parents slept but suddenly there I was, hysterical. My dad finally went up and looked in the bathroom and kitchen. Saw nothing but allowed me to sleep on the couch down there anyway. I didn't fall back asleep. About an hour or so later, I heard the sliding door to the bathroom from my sister's room and limping footsteps. The next morning my dad searched around and noticed that the fridge and pantry had been raided. Never caught the guy. Reposted from previous scary thread a while back. I was driving home through back roads I had never been on and came across a bookstore in a tiny town in the woods. The bookstore was actually a house, where the front of the home had been converted into a store. There was a box on the porch that said .50 books so I stopped to see if there were any Stephen King books in there. Middle aged woman comes out with a huge smile, and gives me a bowl of fruit and some tea. I'm like, this place is awesome and rifle through books while eating the fruit and downing the tea. Inside the store home, there were a lot of cool art books and stuff, so I spent some more time in there. She brought me more tea, even when I said, no thank you, that's plenty, she kept refilling, gave me dessert too, brownies and cookies, I didn't realize it at the time, but she was drugging me, it's hazy to remember the details, but at some point, she closed the shop, telling me to take my time looking at the books, she told me that she was going to go take a shower, and was gone for a while. When I was ready to pay, I had to wander back through her house to find her. I found her in her bedroom. She was in bed. I'm pretty sure she was naked. At the time, I thought weird. She's watching an exercise video in bed but later realized she was watching pee. You might think this is hot, but it isn't. She was my mom's age, and had been telling me how she reminded me of her kids in college. So, not hot. I told her I was ready to pay, and she told me how to open the register. So I went and opened it, put in what I thought I owed, took out the change, and left. When I stumbled outside, a fire engine drove by, screaming with sirens. In the distance was the glow of a big forest fire, and the stars were being covered by smoke. A tall man on a horse watched the fire truck pass. He looked right at me, took a piece of wood or something out of his mouth, and said, Town's burning. I swear to god I have a crystal clear memory of this happening, even though I'm sure it couldn't have. By this point, I guess I was seriously tripping balls on something. 
I'm not a drug guy, so I don't know what I had, but I was out of my mind and could hardly walk. I got back in my car, and drove, home along twisting roads on tall cliffs above the ocean. Twice I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. One of the times I realized this because a massive truck was headed straight for me, laying on the horn and flashing its lights. I kept thinking about how my car could be like an airplane and a submarine if I drove it off the cliff. I can't believe I made it home alive. Later I realized I was in that house for about 4 hours looking at books. At least that's what I hoped the heck I was doing. TL. DR. A middle aged woman drugged me, and I probably almost ended up as a gimp in her basement. I am an electrician so I tend to get into undesirable places. For instance, I was under a house with a cordless sawzall to make a hole for a cooktop vent. I started to hear some scurrying noises and shined my flashlight towards the noise to find three cotton mouth snakes coming my way. Apparently primal fear makes me wield that saw like a freaking ninja. Me three snake zero. Not me but a friend of mine. Female, about 22 at the time, worked for Google Maps as some sort of surveyor or photographer. Google sends her and another female co-worker to some remote location in Mexico for a few days for business. The hotel they were staying at was apparently nice enough, but literally outside the walls of the hotel was a really rough ghetto with people living in boxes lining the streets. Anyway, the first day of the trip she and her co-worker are taking a taxi to the location they have to survey and at a red light. Some crazy guy opens the door, tries to pull my friend out and then starts stabbing her in the chest with a knife. The cab driver pulled away but not before she'd been stabbed six times. She survived but has pretty bad scars and has become a much different and quieter person since. When I was about six years old I went to the CD carnival that was set up in a mall parking lot with my dad and my grandma. We were waiting on line for the infamous Piray chip ride. My dad got off the line to get us drinks. Maybe about 5 minutes later a man grabs my hand and says come on. This line's too long and starts leading me away. I remember my grandma yelling after me Mel that's not your father. I looked up and saw this man wearing matching a matching pair of faded denim jacket and jeans. Cheap Nazca sunglasses. And a firefighter's mustache. When he saw that my grandma was screaming he let go of my hand and vanished into the crowd. We told these cops that were standing by their cars and they said they couldn't do anything. It actually bothered me for a very long time. I was in India for work, staying at a fairly nice hotel. I don't do this often. I usually like to head straight to the room and order room service while watching a movie. But I decided to have a drink at the lobby bar. I had a drink on my own. There was no one else around in the bar and I made small talk with the bartender. I ordered another drink and decided to use the bathroom. I was gone a couple of minutes and when I got back I noticed that my drink, scotch and dry, had a cloudy white rim at the top which isn't normally there. On closer inspection, the cloudy froth was settling into a powdery residue on the side of the glass. I asked the bartender what was wrong with the drink and he at first acted like he didn't notice anything. I was suspicious now and kept at it until he acknowledged he saw something. I mean, it was obvious, there was this froth 2-3 millimeters around the glass. Then he said that it always happens and it's nothing. I then looked him directly in his eyes and asked, did he put anything in my drink? It's hard to explain, but his response, though it was no, told me everything I needed to know. So I made out like I was more curious than anything, and asked him whether he would taste it. He said no and said he would pour me another. I declined and said I would drink it, but I just wanted him to tell me if it was off or not. All this while, there was this awkward vibe where we both knew the jig was up but we were pretending like this wasn't happening. I paid up and left the drink where it was, locked and latched my door, the whole time picturing myself lying in a bath of ice, sun organs. I always feel crappy when I make statements that could be construed as generalizations, but as a single American woman who's traveled alone in all sorts of countries, I can say hands down India is full of the sketchiest, gropiest, sexual assaultiest guys I've ever seen. It was a dark and stormy night. I was spending the summer in FL, with an aunt and uncle. I left with my uncle to go get dinner and bring it home, and when we got back, house was strangely quiet. Their three yo son quiet in his crib, searched the house, could not find my aunt. Then we saw the 200 pound glass sliding patio door storm panel was missing. 
It had been flung out onto the patio and my aunt was under it. We freaked. It took both of us to lift it off her. She was convulsing. Froth running down her face. I called 911. Uncle held her head. We figured it out over the next few hours days. Aunt had been closing the patio door. Reached up to turn off the light switch. And the house and she both were struck by lightning. Went in her hand and out her nose. Later we found all her nose hairs were burnt. She had somehow been flung outside with the sliding door. She survived. Had electrical tremors and symptoms for about 2 years. TL. DR. Mother nature can be a total B. I used to work graveyards at a Circle K in a northern CA college town. CA law states that no alcohol can be sold between 2 6 am. At about 2 45 am, a couple of guys come into the store, go to the cooler to grab a couple of 18 packs of crap beer, cause, keystone, can't remember now, I tell the leader of the duo that it's after 2, I can't sell the beer to him, as he starts getting irate, I offer him a free coffee, soda, candy bar, but I can't sell the beer. Cops and management had been all over our asses for questionable sales. The leader gets the 1000 yard stare in his eyes and proceeds to start reaching for the small of his back. At which point his buddy says, stop, man, it's not worth it. The leader smiled at me and winked and said see you soon, and left. Two days later I got fired for telling the regional dickhead that two people needed to be on at night, and a few other things, so my assistant manager had to cover my shift. That night he was robbed and had the crap knocked out of him by a guy that fit the description of the tool I dealt with a few nights before. TL. DR. Narrowly avoided getting a shotgun shoved in my face, but a friend wound up with it instead. Strange things are always afoot at Circle K. I was waiting at a red light at a four-way intersection. It turned green. I looked over at a gas station and saw my friend pumping gas. I leaned out the window to give him the finger and yell at him. If I had just driven off I would have been killed by a guy who ran a red light doing at least 65. Saved by being in butthole. Backcountry skiing in some moderate fog. I thought I knew where I was going until it thickened up a bunch and I realized I really couldn't distinguish terrain features. White snow against a white fog backdrop. I was about to stop to figure out where I was until my eyes locked onto some sharp dark features that just materialized near my feet. I looked down just as I felt this floaty anti-gravity feeling and realized I was was looking at not quite vertical cliff face that I had just lofted off of. I decided to just look like a boss, track out clear of the rocks, and stick the landing after what felt like a 200 meter fall only to have my ski ice bury in snow and just stick. I blew out both bindings and made a face first snow angel in DE powder. I rolled onto my back to admire what was actually only a 8 10 meter fall and laugh my butt off. Comma made a face first snow angel in DE powder. You made Scarface proud. When I was a kid I was staying up at some family friends hobby farm. Me and their boy Sean. We were both around 11 or 12. Got up and I gave him a hand doing his chores on the farm. As we walked up to the barn we hear a big commotion in the chicken cooperative. As we walked up to the coop I noticed motion in the chicken wired 2x6 window. Me and Sean are standing 15 feet away from the coop window. I verified with Sean later that we both saw a man appear on the right side of the window. As he floated, or possibly rollerbladed, by the window he slowly looked over at us. And as if finding us wanting turned away and continued out of sight. I will never forget the look on that face. It was the face of an old man who was bloated and severely ill. Unfortunately it was a face that seemed very familiar. Both me and Sean thought it was his father. His father at the time was a healthy and fit 45 year old. But we were both left with the impression that we had seen his father. Anyways, we rush up to the coop to see what's going on. Nothing there except agitated chickens doing their thing. Me and Sean talked about it for the rest of the day and could make no sense of it. His dad had been gone running errands since 5am and didn't return until later that afternoon. Me and Sean never talked about it after that day. In hindsight I can see it became taboo. I fell out of touch with Sean as I got older until I got a call from my parents to let me know that Sean's dad had passed away from cancer and gave me info on his service. 
The service was at the old hobby farm. Being there brought back a lot of memories but I'm sure I wasn't thinking about me and Sean's spooky incident. My brain had filed that under miscellaneous long ago and forgot about it. Right up until I saw a certain picture in a collection of images from Sean's father's life. The picture that caught my eye was one taken a few weeks before he passed. There he was holding his newly born granddaughter and I guran fkntu he was the same man I saw looking over at me and Sean that happily forgotten day from our childhoods. No doubt about it. When I saw the face I was immediately transported back to that moment. All the smells and doubts and fears. I guess that's it. I am agnostic and loathe superstition and am no means wish to contribute to it, but this did happen to me. I live in NYC and work the graveyard shift. I get out about 4-5 am every night. So I'm on the subway and I jump on the one train and there is this guy sitting alone with a fedora and a trench coat. We're the only two in the car. I look at him right before I step on and we make eye contact. His eyes are bloodshot and crossed and I hesitate right before getting on and he notices clearly. I get on anyway and walk down to the complete opposite side of the car. I'm bigger than him. He's a small fat, pale white, middle aged bald guy. But he is just staring me down and hasn't taken his hands out of his pockets. He has his eyes locked on me and it's making me uncomfortable so I just turn and start staring at him, thinking he might look away quickly. Instead, he stands up. I immediately stand up too and we are just standing at either end of the car looking at each other. As we're pulling up to the next stop, I walk up to the door like I'm getting off. The car stops and the doors open. Still no one in sight. And I jump off the train. He jumps off too. I wait for the ding the doors make before closing and jump back in right as they close. He doesn't make it. As the train starts to pull out this guy just stares me down through the glass. I wave goodbye with a big crap eating grin. TL. DR. Had a staring contest with a cross eyed freak in the NYC subway at 4am. That was your arch nemesis. You just missed out on the most epic battle of the century. I was in Flax, an art store in SF, getting supplies, and this guy was following me around the store. I decided it was time to split, and he followed me to the checkout line, and all the way to my car. I was 21 at the time and there were no cell phones back then, amazingly, so I was on my own. So this guy starts talking about the machines in his head and how the government is following him. Crazy stuff like that. But here's the thing. I come from a crazy family. I know crazy. He wasn't crazy. My best idea for defense was to use all those FBI techniques I have gleaned from watching too many cop shows, and be crazier than he was. I started stepping closer to him, and never broke eye contact. I raised my voice when I spoke and was really excited when we had something in common. I said I wanted to get to know him better, and where did he live? I could visit him. He said some homeless shelter in the address. And I got really excited and said I knew exactly where that was. I could visit him on Thursday. He ended up backing up throughout the conversation. And at one point asked, why are you talking to me? I looked away, wistfully, and said, not many people talk to me. You know, this is all a totally true story. I've never done it again thank goodness. But he left scared. I went home safely. Victory for me. Oh my god, that was beautiful. Remind me to do this next time I have someone creepy trying to talk to me. One up is her creepiness. If it makes any difference, I will preface this by saying that I'm female. That fact may or may not make the following creepier. I used to live next to an eye hospital. One day, walking home, I was stopped by an old man who clearly had trouble seeing. He asked me to help him across the road to the hospital. I agreed, and he grabbed hold of my hand very tightly. At this point I noticed his fingers were stained brown from tobacco, covered in scabs, and his fingernails were very long and dirty. I started to think that my good deed for the day would be a bit regrettable. When we got to the other side of the road he still had my hand grasped so tightly I couldn't politely pull away. Do you want to see my eye he said. One of his eyes was squeezed shut. With his free hand he pulled the lids apart and I realized to my horror that he had no eyeball just an empty socket. I started babbling still trying to be polite, about how that was very interesting, but I had to go. Then he uttered the immortal words, do you want to put your finger in there he was pulling really hard on my hand trying to force my fingers into his empty eye socket. At this point I gave up on politeness and struggled my hand free. It was difficult, he was really strong, 
and just ran for it. I could hear him laughing as I ran off. TL. DR. Stranger tried to force me to put my fingers in his empty eye socket. So many many years ago I worked the night shift at a 7 stroke 11 in a neighborhood right next to a bad neighborhood. Until about 2 in the morning we had a security guard, but he didn't even carry a gun. From 2 until 5 you were on your own. After I was hired I found out this particular 7 stroke 11 had been robbed a few times and when family members I knew found out I was working there they tried to convince me to quit. Well as I work nights I slept during the day and one evening I woke up from this very intense dream where I was shot. It was so intense I woke up sweating with this feeling that I was punched in the chest. I decided to quit that day. Well about a week later I go in to collect my paycheck and there's a new guy working the late shift. Seemed alright. I spoke to him for a moment and I left. I found out that the next night he was shot in the chest while working and died in the hospital. Okay, I got contacts around the time I turned 21, and I had a real phobia of putting things in my eyes. If you live in the US, you know that they won't let you leave the ophthalmologist with your first pair of contacts unless you can put them in at least one time. It took me having to come back three days in a row before I could get it right. That's how disturbed I was about it, but I was determined to have contacts. Anyways, I was real careful about rubbing my eyes with them in, because I had this paranoid fear that I would grind them into my eyes. I know, I know. Like I said, I had a real phobia. So, I go to take a bath, and I'm real careful about getting soap in my eyes. Finally, I wash my hair and close my eyes as I douse water on my head. I rub my eyes and open them, and... I realize I'm blind. I can see absolutely nothing. I was in a state of sheer terror. I got incredibly still, and all the possibilities were going through my head. How was I going to get out of the bathtub without help? Was this permanent? How was I going to live my life blind? Then the lights came back on. In the 5 seconds when I had closed my eyes, the power had gone off, and since the bathroom had no window, I'd been in pitch darkness. TL. DR. I briefly thought I had gone blind, but it was just a power outage. Hug. I must have been but 11 when my family was headed down to a neighborhood pool party. My mom and I were bringing a dish inside while my brothers, unbeknownst to my mother, went down to the pool and hopped in. It was crowded in the pool, and wasn't shallow enough for my brothers to stand. They were drowning right there next to everybody. They weren't even 5 or 6 yet. My mom walked out onto the pool deck looking for them and was shouting as she ran to the pool side and everything was panicked and oh my god adrenaline crying breathing crying. It's terrifying when anybody that you love, or any child for that matter, suddenly goes missing or is in danger like that. My first job was working at a gas station. One night when business lulled after rush hour, a car drove up and the man inside it asked me for directions to a restaurant. I started giving him directions and he asked me to come closer because he couldn't hear very well over the noise from the street. I thought it was reasonable, so I took a couple steps closer to his car. As I was explaining how to get to the restaurant from the gas station the man interrupted me and said you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I'd like to put them in a jar on my desk so I can look at them all day. The guy I was working with quickly yanked me away from the man's car and told the creep that he needed to leave or the cops would be called. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.